Hello! In our last couple of videos, we were exploring errors, how to find them and fix them. And actually, we, we found and fixed a number of, uh, of compile time syntax errors, and then we, we got our program compiling only to discover that it crashed with a runtime error when we tried to run it. Uh, our robot walked into a wall. We'll see that again in a moment. And we learned that it's very important to fully understand the error message before we attempt to fix our program at all, otherwise we're likely to break something that was already working instead of fixing the thing that was broken. And let's see. Let's we we were trying to explore and understand just this one error message from the robot moving into the wall when it was supposed to be darkening this whole comb shaped region. And here's that error message again. And we learned that this means that uh, let's look at the whole error message that our program crashed because we attempted to remove the robot, you can't see this, but it says to an occupied location, in other words, into a wall. And we learned how to read an error message like this, that this tells us we called Darken Comb, and indeed I did call Darken Comb. That was what triggered, what started running the program, that was my main method. And on line 14 of Darken Comb, we apparently called Move to Next Tooth, which on line 48 called move and make dark, which on line 65 called robot move. And on line 103 of robot move apparently it crashed into the wall. Now, we realized that we trust robot move works correctly, therefore we probably called robot move when we shouldn't have. So we backed up to look at move and make dark, and even there we discovered we called move and make dark when we shouldn't have, because if you move and make dark you will crash into this wall. So then we worked our way backwards to move to next tooth. So we were looking at that on line 48. And here's that move to next tooth. And it's the first move and make dark that's crashing here. And we want to figure out why. So that's the first move and make dark. That means nothing has happened yet. We're at the very beginning. We're at move and make dark, which goes to move and crashes. So did we meet the precondition for move to next tooth? Well, are we already on a dark square? Yes. Are there two light-colored squares ahead? No, there's a wall ahead. So apparently, we we shouldn't even be calling move to next tooth at this point. So move to next tooth might be fine. The problem is we shouldn't even call move to next tooth. So now we've backed up all the way to darken comb line 14, where move to next tooth was called. So I hit control G in Dr. Java, and I tell it I want to go to line 14. And there we are, line 14. So here's me calling move to next tooth, apparently where I shouldn't have. Well, now, wait a second, that's surprising, because this looks pretty harmless, right? This is my main dark in the whole comb, and it makes perfect sense to me. It, we made the first cell dark, we darkened this tooth. We moved to the next tooth, we darkened that. We moved to the next tooth. Although, actually, if I explore this, there is a tip that something has gone wrong. Because we were supposed to make the first cell dark, well, it is dark, we're supposed to darken a tooth, and that tooth did become dark. We're supposed to move to the next tooth, and that worked. That appears to have worked, because this part is dark. Uh, but then we didn't apparent we didn't darken this tooth, right? So we moved to the next one, but we didn't darken it. In fact, if we look at it, we didn't even appear to stop at that tooth. It seemed like something very bad happened here. Um, we we moved here, we didn't darken this, and then we did darken the rest of this. How did all of this get dark? Let's uh, let's explore another way we can debug and get to the bottom of this. One great thing that we can do for a program that is is this straightforward, and this is a reasonably straightforward program as programs go, is we can start testing the individual pieces one at a time. So we suspect either move to next tooth is broken or darken tooth is broken, but we don't know which one. So let's try manually. Let's load up that world, which was called, I believe, comb.txt. Let's bring that up. So there it is. And let's just try these one at a time, and we'll just call them in the order they're supposed to appear here. So, robot make dark. That looks good. Okay, the next line says comb darken tooth. Let's take a look. Does it appear to be darkening a tooth correctly? Well, the tooth is dark, so that's good. Okay, now we will comb move to next tooth, and I'm getting these just by running the lines of code in this program one at a time. Comb, move to next tooth, so we're on this line. 
and we would expect it to advance to this part. And it does advance there. Now, I'm very suspicious that my robot has changed direction here. But just for fun, let's darken the next tooth. So right now, I suspect move to next tooth is the problem. Sorry, but let's let's call darken tooth. If I darken tooth from here, well, when the robot started facing north over here and I darkened tooth, it darkened all the cells to the right. So over here, when it darkens all the cells to the right, well, that's not going to be this. These cells are behind it. It's going to darken over here. And let's try that out. Sure enough, those cells are becoming dark. The robot returns to where it started. And the next line of code tells us to move to next tooth. But I know that move to next tooth is now going to fail. That's exactly the line of code that was failing. So maybe I'll take a look at move to next tooth. Here's move to next tooth. And we'll just, we could call the lines one at a time. The first thing it's going to do is move and make dark. But I happen to know that move and make dark is going to begin by moving. And if I simply move here, we're already sunk, right? We've now walked into a wall. So what went wrong? Well, we darkened this tooth correctly. When we moved to the next tooth, it looked good, but apparently the robot was facing the wrong direction, and so it was no longer in a state where I could call uh, darkened tooth because it's no longer facing north. A precondition for darkened tooth is that the tooth is to the robot's right, and here the tooth is behind it. So we're going to take a look at uh, move to next tooth, which is what we suspect here. Oh, there we go, move to next tooth. And sure enough, for no good reason, we're moving and make dark, move and make dark, and for some some crazy reason, we're turning left at the end of that. We suspect that that's probably broken. So we'll compile. So notice, it was not obvious at first that the line of code that was at fault was at the end of move to next tooth, because the program is crashing in at the beginning of move to next tooth. Right? It was crashing on this line. But that line was, we were in trouble on that line because we were calling move to next tooth after darkened tooth after the previous move to next tooth, which left the robot in the wrong state having turned left. So that just gives you a sense of just how tricky it is it can be to trace down these errors and how an error in one place in the code may not manifest itself until a lot a, a long time later. Let's, let's see if we fix this. I'll load my comb again. Actually, I don't, well, sure, we'll load the comb. And we'll do this one at a time and see if we get past the point we were at before. So we will, uh, sorry, comb, darken, tooth, I believe. So there's a darkening a tooth. Huh, it's kind of slow. Let's see if we can speed that up. I believe that would be set the delay to be 100 milliseconds. That's faster than it usually runs, I believe. But if it's not fast enough, we can always change it again. Uh, we'll move to the next tooth. I. I think it's called move to next tooth, but it really darkens to the next tooth. There it is. Oh, we forgot to darken at the beginning. Oh, but that's okay because our actual program does not forget to darken at the beginning. All right, so now if we darken the tooth to the right, there it goes. And we move to the next tooth. Everything's good. We don't crash into the wall. So let's see all of that in one fell swoop. We'll recompile. I don't know. I guess I'm just recompiling to clear the screen. And we'll uh, darken comb. We should run all of the code. And there it goes. And we're making pa making it past the point where, where the program crashed. Do we have another error? Uh, we seem to be pretty good. There we go. Now let's come back to our... Uh, our blackboard for a moment. We said we had three kinds of errors. We spent a lot of time fixing compile time errors. We had many of them, but each one was easy to fix, where we spelled something wrong or had the wrong punctuation, lost a brace, something like that. Then we had runtime errors, and we had only one error, and that was that it, the program crashed. But it took us a very long time to figure out why the program was crashing, and even longer to figure out what we had to fix to stop the program from crashing. And the, the place where we had to fix was actually not where we not where the program crashed it was it was a few steps uh, earlier it was a couple method calls earlier um, the third possibility is that we have a logical error where the program doesn't do what we want and I just want to introduce one of these so that you can see a logical error although 
it's really uh, it's hard to separate runtime errors from logical errors. So my program crashed, but it also crashed because it wasn't doing what I wanted. So they're closely related. Let's see a case of a of a runtime error. Um, actually, of a logical error. Here's a very simple logical error. Suppose we forgot to make dark at the beginning, and we go ahead and darken the comb. Now, and that was an easy mistake to make too. Now, if we run the program. Where the program's not going to crash, but it didn't do everything I wanted. It has a logical error. And logical errors are actually among the hardest to track down because you don't have an error message telling you where things broke. You just have everything running fine, and now it's up to you to figure out why did we somehow not change that cell to be dark? And, uh, and it may take some very careful detective work. In this case, I think it's a reasonably straightforward one, especially since we know exactly what I did to break the program, but logical errors are actually going to be the worst of all. They're the ones we'll spend the most time on. The program runs, it just doesn't do what we want. So hopefully that gave you some appreciation of the many kinds of errors you will be facing or have already been facing, um, that you're not alone, that everyone has a hard time with error messages, and that it's critical that we understand what the error message means and what the error condition is, why it occurred, before we make any attempt to change it, and every change we made should be the result of, of clear reasoning and not random guessing. Um, and, of course, we're never going to take our error messages perfectly because they happen to everyone. So, good luck. May you see very few errors in your future.